But I believe in every fiber on my being, we have only one truly sacred obligation to prepare those we send into harm's way and care for them and their families when they come home and when they don't. It's a sacred obligation, not based on party or politics, but on a promise, a promise to unite all of us. Loud bangs echoed through the air as Serbian protesters clashed with NATO peacekeeping soldiers on Monday in the town of Zvechan in Kosovo. About 25 soldiers were injured while defending its town hall, as well as those in two other locations, the NATO-led mission said. It condemned the violence. Two Serbs were also injured, according to Serbian state TV. The tense situation developed after ethnic Albanian mayors took office in northern Kosovo's Serb-majority area. The U.S. and its allies, which have strongly backed the country's independence, rebuked Kosovo for the move last week. Serbs boycotted the local elections, and some saw a turnout of 3.5 percent. The Serbs are demanding that the Kosovo government remove ethnic Albanian mayors from town halls and allow local administrations financed by Belgrade to resume their work. Serbia's President Aleksandar Vucic put the army on the highest level of alert while urging Serbs in Kosovo not to get entangled in conflict. I am urging the Serbs in Kosovo, and I know how they feel and how difficult it is for them not to get in a conflict with NATO. Kosovo's president has accused Vucic of destabilizing the country. But Igor Simic, the deputy head of the biggest Belgrade-backed Kosovo Serb party, says it's actually the other way around. He accused Kosovo's prime minister of stoking the chaos. Serbs do not have problem with Albanians. We are facing the problem with the regime of Albin Kurti, who is doing everything to make chaos here and to create chaos. Ethnic Albanians make up more than 90 percent of the population in Kosovo as a whole but Serbs comprise a majority in the north. They've never accepted its 2008 declaration of independence from Serbia and still see Belgrade as their capital more than two decades after the Kosovo-Albanian uprising against repressive Serbian rule. South Korea is racing to become a major player in the world's market for weapons, eager to tap into Europe's hunger for arms. At this factory on its southern coast, Automated robots and workers are churning out artillery vehicles destined for Poland. It's all run by Hanwha Aerospace, already the globe's top maker of howitzers. The company is a big part of the $14 billion arms deal that the South Korean government struck with Poland last year, as Western countries scrambled to arm Ukraine and tensions spike in areas from North Korea to the South China Sea. Reuters spoke to more than a dozen executives and officials who say the deal will pave the way for Seoul's ambitions to be a world-class weapons supplier. Hanwha Aerospace Director Oh Kiwan. The Czech Republic, Romania, Slovakia, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and others were thinking of buying defense products only in Europe. But now it is more well known that you can buy at a low price and have it delivered quickly from South Korean companies too. The deal was the country's biggest ever of its kind, and it promised hundreds of domestically designed rocket launchers, howitzers, tanks and fighter jets, all of which are designed to be compatible with U.S. and NATO systems. Polish officials say South Korea's offer to make weapons faster than almost anyone was a key consideration. Constant tensions with North Korea mean the South's arms production is always up and running, and continuously being upgraded. Oskar Petrovich, an analyst in Poland, contrasts that with Germany and other major arms supplier. The country's interest in South Korea's offer may only grow considering the limited production capacity of German's defense industry, which is a major arms supplier in the region. And for example, in 2018, Hungary has ordered 44 Leopards from uh, Leopard tanks uh, from Germany, and so far none has been delivered. South Korean officials told Reuters they have pitched Warsaw in producing their weapons within Poland for easier delivery. However, Poland's Ministry of National Defense did not respond to a written request for comment.
Last month, South Korea's President Yoon suk yeol told Reuters that his country may extend support to Ukraine beyond humanitarian and economic aid if it comes under wide-scale civilian attack. Since then, his government has approved use of at least some South Korean weapons components in Ukraine. China's homegrown passenger plane completed its first commercial flight on Sunday, marking a milestone in the country's effort to become more self-reliant. The narrow-body jet is 15 years in the making. The product of state-backed company Comax aimed to compete with Airbus and Boeing. President Xi Jinping hailed the project as a triumph of Chinese innovation. Some of the plane's first passengers were equally enthused. I'm feeling very emotional. Actually, when I heard about the C919's maiden flight, I spent the whole week paying attention to everything about this development. I was paying attention to when tickets go on sale, then I tried to buy tickets from the moment they were released. The plane completed a two-hour flight from Shanghai to Beijing with China Eastern Airlines, with a return scheduled later in the day Sunday and longer flights on the horizon. A COMAC official recently said the company has won over 1,200 plane orders from at least 32 customers so far, the majority of which are reportedly based in China. Chinese media reported the plane maker expects annual production to reach 150 jets within five years. Although assembled in China, the plane relies heavily on components such as engines and avionics from Western firms. Neither European nor U.S. regulators have certified the aircraft yet. Until they do, key international markets will remain closed to the C919. Given the popularity of Comac's previous planes with Indonesian airlines, experts estimate the C919's international future lies mainly in the developing world.